Hello, Swexies! As you saw from that previous slide, sweat implies hard work, and working hard for anything is sexy. So that is what we are here to do. We are here to get Swexy. And I'm so proud of you for tuning in today and taking it the next step on your fitness journey. And my goodness, we are going to be having fun while we are doing fitness. Yay! That's my favorite. So all of these exercises are designed to help you be the best pinup model that you can be. So there's ways to get into those very general poses, but if you can pull in those abs just a little bit more and lift the ribcage just a little bit higher, that will take your picture from being good to very good to then excellent. And that is what we are aiming for, holding our body while still having a good time and a smile on our face. So today you have tuned in for Pinup Girl Pilates Level 1. So we are going to cover all of the basics. We are going to take our time to go through all of the most essential elements of Pilates to help you get that pinup posture. So without further ado, pick out your favorite pumps, grab a mat, and let's get started. Okay, Swexy, so, so in my opinion, and I'm not a professional, I've never done a pinup shoot before, but I am a student of pinup, and I've been researching poses and poses, and one of the things that I have noticed the most often is that the most important element of that pinup pose, any pinup pose, is that your lower abs be pulled in. Now, this is really tricky. I've been teaching Pilates for a long time, and I find that there are many gals who find it confusing uncomfortable, difficult to engage the lower abs. So I want you to join me and I want you to lie down on your mat with your knees bent and your feet flat. So because of your heels, you're not going to be able to point your toes all of the way down to the ground, but this is going to be a great way to actually really work those ankles as part of the exercise. So I want you to constantly think about reaching your toes to the floor, even if they don't touch. So, we're going to do three different versions to try and find the best way to flatten the tummy. For the very first one, I want you to go ahead and place your hands right on top of your pelvis. And I want you just to think about sucking your tummy in, okay? So, when you suck it in, you should feel your abs, of course, pull down from your hands, but you should feel no tightness in your glutes. You, they should be able to move nice and free. But that is a really hard thing to keep engaged, and it's really difficult to get the abs engaged all the way through just like that. So we're going to try it again. So you're going to put your hands on your tummy, and I want you to tilt your pelvis up. Yeah. Okay. So, do you see what's happening here in my abdominals? Do you see this little bulge? Well, first of all, of course, that's anesthetic. You don't like that. And then as soon as you do that, you feel tension immediately dart up into your neck and your shoulders. And it's not a comfortable feeling, and it certainly does not look comfortable. So this is how I propose, and this is what I've been telling my students in Pilates. Instead of thinking first, sucking it in, or instead of tightening all your muscles to pull it in, I want you to think instead about simply rolling your hips up and back. So watch this. I'm going to roll them up and back. Ah. Now feel your tummy, feel your upper abdominals. So all of a sudden, your lower spine is a little bit more lengthened, your tummy's flat, and there's no stress anywhere in your body. I want you to remember this position because we are going to come back to it again and again and again. So here we go. Release it out and roll it back. And release it out and roll it back. And release, roll. So what we're really trying to do is to pull our hip bones away from our thighs. You see that? I'm stretching them away from the thighs. And again, pull and release. Two more like that. Draw them in. Release. Last time, draw them in and release. Good. So here is going to be our first challenge now that we have got that imprinting under control. I want you to now roll the hip bones back and you're going to be putting your hands on your tummy to make sure that there's no pushing out. And we're going to draw the right leg into a position that we call tabletop. So this is a 90 degree angle in Pilates. So the trick is to keep those abs engaged as you reach that leg away. And then you're going to draw back in. So we're inhaling as we tap. 
exhale to pull it back and inhale to tap and exhale to pull good so as that leg reaches away I want you to think about pulling that belly button up 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 away from that thigh and the second before you lift it I want to see a contraction before you pull and again pull the hip bone away pull the abs away and contract on the exhale two more like that and inhale tap and exhale pull last one inhale tap and exhale pull good job so now we're going to try and draw that left leg up to join our right so when we engage the second leg it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to keep the abs engaged so go ahead and once again put your hands on your tummy reset get that pelvis pulled in and then you're going to draw that right leg up ah did you feel a bulge in your tummy you did okay let's try it one more time so once again let's reset pull the hip bones away from the thighs and really hold it hold it squeeze every muscle in your abdominals tighten it and then deepen it a little bit more right before you join that leg good job you got it that time didn't you that's a very sexy so go ahead and let that right leg go down and now we're just gonna let the left leg go for eight inhale tap and exhale pull and inhale tap and exhale pull and inhale tap good job exhale pull it's not as easy as it looks. It's so simple, but it does take a lot of focus. And pull. And again, inhale, tap. And exhale, pull two more. Inhale, tap. Exhale, pull. And again, inhale, tap. And exhale, pull. So we're going to draw that right leg in the joint again. So ready? Squeeze the abs and contract. Good. So I bet you know what's coming next both legs. These are called knee folds. So you're going to inhale, tap. Now squeeze that tummy and pull it in. And inhale, tap. And exhale, pull. Good. Inhale, tap. And exhale, pull. And inhale, tap. And exhale, pull. If you start to feel yourself pushing your abs into your tummy, again, reset. You can put those legs down, roll those hips back again, dig it in, and then try from the beginning. So I always think the further my legs go away from me and they're heavy, the more I want to roll my hips back and pull my abs in. Woo! Two more. And contract. And last one. And contract. Good job. I think you deserve a little bit of a break. So the next exercise we're going to do is called knee sways. And this is going to help with the rotation of the spine. And believe it or not, we are going to come back into imprinting. So from here, you're just going to allow your legs to go over to the left and take your arms out to the side. So we're just going to take a nice little stretch here. Think about your right shoulder pressing down. So even though we are in this twisting position, this is no excuse for us to let go of those abs. And there is so much twisting in the pinup to make the waist look smaller. So right here, I want you to think of imprinting. So you can roll those hips back. Engage the tummy, you see that? All of a sudden everything pulls long. Let it go. Not that great? Pull it back. And now use that to come back to center. Good. Inhale as you rotate. And exhale, contract. And inhale as you rotate. And exhale, contract. Good. Feeling that tightening in the tummy. Feeling the lengthening in the lower back. No stress in the neck. No stress in the shoulders. The abs are doing all of the work. We're getting that waistline working. Feeling those obliques. You're feeling your abs grow stronger with every twist. And by keeping the hips rolled back in that imprinting position, we're going to keep the waist looking long. Very long. Good. Hug the knees into the chest, and we're going to get ready for the next exercise. Okay, Swexy. So the second most important concept that I think that we need to grasp as I've looked over these pinup photos is the idea of the lifted rib cage. It really gives a nice little homage to the girls, of course, and it helps to pull your waist even longer. And it's very strong at the same time that it is feminine. And so I really like that a lot. So the flight is really includes the muscles of the back and again the pulling in of the abs so we've got those of course the hips rolling right here 
So one of the ways that I like to explain the concept of flight is this. Imagine you were going to sneeze, right? Very exaggerated sneeze. <gasps> Choo! Right? So that whole little awe moment <gasps> is really lifting that rib cage. Now all of a sudden you feel your waist go long as well, and that's what we're looking for. So let's just try that a couple more times, okay? So here we go. <gasps> And release, and even get some pin-up face going on at the same time. And again. And release. And one more time. Okay, so now that you know kind of what that looks like, we're going to take it down to the ground and try it from there. And there, we're going to start to find that we're going to have to use our back muscles just a little bit more. Okay, sweaties. So, flight. Very first thing, even though you're on your tummy, once again, we're going to have to imprint. So I want you to just relax your head onto your hands like so, with your head facing down. I'm just going to turn my head so that I can talk to you. So once you're like this, I want you to think about imprinting. So your lower abs are going to lift up off of the mat. You see that? So I did not engage my glutes. So when I do that, they're relaxed, as opposed to squeezing it and you can't move it at all, right? That's very gentle. So you're lifting and rolling the hips back, which actually helps to lengthen your lower back and to help make sure that you don't hyper extend the lower back as well. So I want you to imagine, once you have that set, that you're going to be pushing a marble with your nose. And this is actually how they teach you this fundamental in Pilates. So your hands are right by your shoulders, elbows are back, and you're looking down and you have that imprint with the lower abs. And you're going to imagine you're pushing a marble forward with your nose. That way you can help lengthen your spine. So you're going to be pushing that marble out, push it as far as you can, and then you're going to follow that same line as you look up, and you're going to lengthen to look back down. This is, once again, that same idea as the <gasps> choo, right? But with the lower abs lifting in. So let's do it again. So imprinting and marble with the nose, and lift, and lengthen to go down, and again, pushing the marble with the nose, and lift, and lengthen to go down, two more, and reach, and lift, and lengthen the spine to go down, one more time, and reach, and lift, you can do a little test. Are you really using your back muscles? Hands come back down, and release. Very nice, if you need to go back into child's pose moment for a second, go ahead and do that, and then push play again. So, the next exercise that we're gonna do is called single leg kick in Pilates. Ah, so much fun! How many little poses do we see like this? Lollipops on the phone with feathers. You're gonna come against this one, come up against this one a lot. So for a single leg kick, you're gonna have that same idea of imprinting, have that same idea of the essential of flight, and then you're gonna keep your arms underneath of you. So you're pulling your chest forward, lengthening your spine, lifting your lower abdominals, and then you're gonna kick each individual foot to your booty. You're going to point, flex, point, and lengthen to go down. And again, point, flex, point, and lengthen to go down. So this is what we're looking for. When that leg comes up, you don't want to shorten your lower back or let your tummy go, and you don't want your booty to start to lift up either. That's going to put pressure on your back. So you want that neutral spine to start. Nothing in those hips should move as you pull. And release. And again, point, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release, you got it now, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release, point, flex, point, release. Good, so you should do about eight to ten on each side. So the next one is double leg kick. So this one's going to involve the whole body. There are poses very similar in yoga 
that you could also do to help you with the pinup pose. Double leg kick looks like this. You're going to start with your, with your face to one side and your hands are back behind you. You are going to then imprint those abs and you're going to kick the both legs together towards your booty twice. One, two. Then you're going to reach your hands back towards your feet and lift your legs up off of the floor. And then you're going to come back down with your face to the other side. And once again, you're going to kick. One, two, and stretch. And one, two, and stretch. And one, two, and reach. And one, two, and reach. Oh, this one will get you. One, two, and reach. And one, two, and reach. Oh, good. Go ahead and take a minute to sit back and stretch out the back. That was some really good work. I'm telling you, if you start to master some of these exercises, your posing is going to go to a whole different level. Woo! Awesome! So now, we're going to go into cat, which is a good way to stretch out the spine after all of the work that we've just done. So when we do cat, once again, we're going to start with that imprinting feeling. So you're rolling your hips up and back, pushing your spine as far away from the ground as you can. Then you're going to use the fundamental of flight to pull the chest forward and lengthen out the tailbone. So when you do this, you really want to make sure that you don't get too droopy in the tummy on that extension. So you're lengthening with that imprint, the spine as you push it away, and you're lengthening the spine. I'm really stretching that tailbone away, reaching my chest forward, but keeping the sense that my abs are engaged. And again, contract, and release. And contract, and extend. Oh, feels good. Contract, and extend. Two more like that. Contract, and extend. And again, contract, and extend. Now lateral cat, cat, cat flexion. So you're going to shift your ribs to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Now circle it up, side, down, side, up, side, down, side, up, side, down, side, reverse, side, up, over, down, side, up, over, down, side, up, over, down. One more important note. Notice my shoulders. No matter whether I was in flexion or extension, I was never sinking into the shoulders. As soon as you do that, you shorten the neck, stress into the shoulders, and fun time is over. So for a couple more for good measure, let's push the floor away, shoulders are out of the ears, and extend, and again, shoulders are out of the ears. So there's almost a sense that you are rotating your shoulder in the socket to help you stay nice and stable. So now, two more times, but we're going to lift the feet up one at a time as we do it, just for a little bit more flair. So you're going to contract and extend neutral and lower lift contract extend neutral and lower and lift contract extend neutral lower and contract extend neutral and lower Good, you're almost done. We just have three more exercises today. One of them is called a rotating arm. So you're going to lengthen your arms out to the side, and you're going to rotate one shoulder forward as the other shoulder goes back, and then switch. Rotate and switch. And so I'm not hiking those shoulders up. They're on the same level. They're just twisting. Twist. It's almost like you have two doorknobs. 
one on each side, opening it, closing it, opening it, and closing it, open and close. Let's go a little quicker. Bam, 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 bam. What? <laughs> Good. Okay, rotating arms, which we are going to use for the next couple of exercises. So, saw is next. Saw is going to help with flexibility in the hamstrings and in the spine and also rotation of the spine. So a lot of times when we rotate, we tend to shrink. So this is the challenge for this exercise, is that we want to think about keeping our hip bones away from the bottom of the rib cage as much as possible. Pulling, pulling, and separating in, almost like you have a little spacer to hold in there. So the arms are going to go out to the side. You're going to take a nice deep inhale on that rotation. Lift the rib cage to rotate. Then you're going to lean forward. Here we go. Rotating arms. We just did them. So you're rotating the arms, reaching. You're sawing off your pinky toe with your pinky finger, and you're going to look back over your back hand. So this is, again, using some of the neck muscles that we warmed up in the pinup girl warm-up. So you're looking back, then you're going to stack your spine, rotate to the other side, and reach. And lift. And this is, of course, going to get in the way. And twist and lengthen. So your legs are only about shoulder width apart. And reach. And again, lift, rotate, and reach. And lift that spine, rotate, and reach. And lift, rotate, and reach. And one more time, lift. Rotate and reach. Woo! Good job. So now I want to go into an exercise called a spine stretch forward. So in this position, we are allowing our body to come forward, but this is not a hamstring stretch. This is just a spine stretch. So we are reaching our bodies forward, but at the same time, that imprinting motion. The hips are lifting up rolling back as we reach our arms forward so that we're trying to really create the most round shape possible in the spine almost like the bottom of a rocking horse and that round shape this is something that i see a lot does not start in the bra line so we don't want to collapse our spine we still want to keep it long so it's really the pelvis that's lifting and rotating back as we reach forward and then we come right back and again lift and reach and grow nice and tall and lift and reach and grow nice and tall two more lift and reach and lengthen one more time lift and reach and lengthen up if you find that you're having a hard time sitting up straight even just to start put a few pillows underneath of your booty to give you a little boost and your spine is going to feel a lot better. This is our last exercise. This is called twist. So now we're going to bring those legs together, sitting up nice and tall, and this is all rotation. So once again, we're thinking about that concept of lengthening the spine. You can even push yourself away from your thighs to get started. Put your hands on your tummy to start. We're going to twist one, two. Did you shrink? Did you feel your tummy come out? If you did, stretch it out again. Good. Rotate to the other side, twist one, two, make sure you didn't shrink, lift it up, and back center. So now the same thing, but we are going to take our arms out to the side. Here we go. Up nice and tall, and just like a sprinkler, you're going to rotate one, two, and center. And rotate one, two, and center. And inhale. Just reach through the crown of your head, the bottom of your tailbone, 
and use your feet to help you pull your spine long, almost like flight and lift to come up. Very nice job. That was level one pinup girl Pilates. Keep practicing this one, especially to get that idea of the imprint and of the rib cage lifting. <gasps> That's gonna help with the faces too. You guys, you know what to do. Until the next time we meet, practice, 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 and stay swexy.